Uh, LaTeX is a uh, macro package on top of Tech, which is Tau Epsilon Chi. It's T-E-X, but it's Tau Epsilon Chi. It was actually written by a mathematician slash computer scientist. Most of the world thinks of him as a computer scientist. He considers that an insult and considers himself a mathematician. He's great enough that whatever he says is true about himself. You get to self-define that way when you're at that level. And what he wrote that for is because he was trying to write a book and typesetting books just looked awful. There was nothing good to do this back in 1970s, right? Dark ages. Most of you weren't there. Actually, I think only Kendra and I were around in the 1970s. So... I was in my prime then, too. I, 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 sadly, I think I was as well. So, so, now things have changed, obviously, over the years, but what you... Uh, the system was written by a genius to typeset his books. As you can imagine, it was a little hard for anybody to use if they weren't really, really smart. Okay? You didn't have to be a genius to use it, but you had to be really, really smart. And it was a little bit hard. So Leslie Lamport came along and put a set of macros on top of it, which is what became LaTeX or LaTeX. And nobody knows exactly how to say this, and anybody who's authoritative, it's Lamport. So it would be La, and then Tal Epsilon Chi would be Tech. So it would be LaTeX, which really sounds weird. Nevertheless, that's what I'm going to talk about as a uh, publication method. And by the way, this is what's used in many, many of your textbooks. And most of them are starting to go, all the publishers going to this. The uh, advantages of using LaTeX are profound when you typeset large documents. Microsoft Word and uh, graphical user interface type systems certainly have a place. And they work very well for short documents. But when documents get long and complex, they actually start to fall under themselves in that they're not good at organizing. They're just very, very bad at organizing. Further, the uh, issue of long-term retention of the document comes into play. And the fact that this came out in the 70s, you all think of this as ancient history. But I have papers that I wrote in the 1980s that I've had to go back and, hey, can I read the document? Well, in many cases, I can't because the software doesn't run on a modern computer. It's just impossible to get to. However, a LaTeX document, because it is ASCII, you know what ASCII is? It's, it's just a raw text file. It lasts forever. So whenever you write something in ASCII, it will last forever because it is a standard that is very old and easy to get to. The macro language on top of it doesn't lose the information. And so even if LaTeX goes out of favor completely, the ability to convert over, which exists, will always persist. You can always understand what it's trying to do. So in terms of longevity of your information, your documents, etc., LaTeX is the better way to go. Now, there are other modern standards, XML, et cetera, that are coming around, but they're not actually good for writing the document. So you can convert a LaTeX document into those, but it's very hard to work with them. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over uh, what this uh, package is, what it looks like, and how to use this. Big key for most of you is writing theses, okay? writing a journal paper, et cetera, where one of the beautiful things about this is you're going to have to worry nothing about the style of the document. What size font should I use? What should the headings look like? What should, the, should this be bold? Should this be italics? You don't worry about that. Part of the idea of the abstraction is you worry about content and you don't worry about tabbing things in. You don't worry about spacing. That's all taken care of because part of the philosophy here is that the typesetting, the, the, how it looks as a document, is not relevant to what the material that's contained. Or if it is, at least it should be consistent throughout. So you shouldn't have to worry about hitting an extra blank line between paragraphs as you go. Those of you who've used Word a little bit better know you can define styles in paragraphs in Word. It can be done. But they get uh, applied very inconsistently. For technical literature, every paragraph, almost every paragraph, is the same format as the other paragraphs. So once you define it, you'll be done with it and just say, hey, it's a paragraph. That's the advantage. So I'm going to go through how to do this. I'm going to go through the right state thesis um, style files. I'm going to start by showing you where they are. They're all out there, uh, accessible. Anybody here ever use GitHub before? OK, one person. So uh, you can actually clone 
uh, the repository. Uh, otherwise, you can simply download it. It is out here. If you just go to GitHub and search under it, it's Right State. You can search under Right State Thesis Template. Those of you who get it from someplace else, it's out of date. Why? Because I'm constantly updating this and making sure it has the best capabilities and features. When you have a correction, send it to me. So we go, we click on it. There's a whole bunch of stuff. You can lead, read the files. Instead, read this. And I'm not going to read this to you. I'm going to presume that you can actually read. All this information is here, nicely formatted. Uh, introductions to LaTeX, a whole bunch of words. I'm going to show you rather than uh, having uh, you read through a bunch of slides. I'm going to show you by doing. So I'm going to go to clone or download. And in this case, I'm actually going to uh, download this. Open in desktop is if you use GitHub and have an account. Not a bad thing to do. If you're going to be doing programming, I strongly advocate that you do this. I do it with all of my students. That way, what they're working on, I can see. What I'm working on, they can see. And we can work on it simultaneously. If your advisor isn't doing that, well, you might want to do it just for yourself. That advantage won't be complete. So I can download the zip file. And now I have downloaded, let's see, into my downloads folder, the thesis template. So I take that thesis template, and I'm going to hide my web browser now, and all of what I'm going to do here is actually uh, platform independent. That's one of the other advantages of uh, LaTeX. Uh, Macs didn't exist when it was invented, and neither did PCs. To give you an idea of longevity, PCs did not exist. Macs didn't exist. Okay? And in fact, the Atari and the Commodore that came before a lot of those didn't exist either. So you will go back in time. So we're talking about longevity. Now, this is the actual uh, package. This is what is in here. And uh, there's a number of different files in here you can look at. They set a lot of the formatting style, so on and so forth. You don't need to worry about those files so much. What I would suggest that you do is you go over to uh, WSU Thesis Template. Okay, It's a template. You're going to edit the template. This is where your document's going to end up. You duplicate this and say, Mary, I don't know if anybody's named Mary, we'll go with Mary. I don't like using apostrophes and strange characters uh, because experience in coding tells me that that doesn't work. I'm going to double click and I'm going to actually open this up in, a, uh, in a, uh, an editor, a LaTeX editor. So what I've done is I've changed things a little bit so things might be a little bit rough this time. I'm using now uh, something called Tech Studio. This will give you some of the features that you would get in Word. This is still going to be a programming language. And you can see this looks a little bit arcane, right? This looks a little arcane. What I'm going to tell you is ignore this. You can read all of this, or you can ignore it, OK? Ignore it. Modified fields, OK? Over here, you can pay attention to all of this. Read this. It's pretty easy. You don't need to know what it does. You just have to implement it. LaTeX has a steep learning curve, but once you get there is where you appreciate it. Word is easy, but like anything that's easy, you can't get a lot out of it. It's easier to learn how to use a shovel than a backhoe. So that's LaTeX. Now, what can I do? In the end, let me just jump a little bit to the end here. We compile a document, and I, you know, I, you know this was a little bit dangerous because I set this up in a brand new uh, account here, and there it is. I'm going to tell you, this is a brand new account on my computer. I've never done this before. So you're actually seeing me. I just installed it, just got it working two minutes before I got down here. I didn't know if it would compile and work, right? Things are wrong. This is what the document actually looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare a little bit of what we're doing. Now, given my age, I'm going to switch over here. These are bifocals. These are bifocals. Now you're all blurry, but I can read the computer. Some really great title that provides a concise view of the topic your thesis will address. Now, you might want to change that. If you go over here, you're going to see this in these fields. This means do not break the line here. Don't do this here. It'll put it in the right place. One of the powers of, of LaTeX is you can actually define variables. You say, why would I want to write, why do I want to program my thesis? It's a very valid argument. I made the same argument with my advisor. He regrets that I won the argument because I flipped over a few years after I graduated because I used Word. 
all of that information here, author, first name, author, middle initial, author, last name, pretty clear, right? What the rest of it does doesn't really matter. Degree, full. Master of Science, you could change it to PhD. Uh, this is a dissertation or, th or thesis. Uh, I just kind of mixed it up to show you could do this. Department, Department of Lollipops, you know, will make this interesting. I didn't want it to be geared towards anyone. And if you go over to the PDF, it actually formats the whole page for you. It put the word dissertation in here. Master, you know this is inconsistent. Master thesis by Johnny B. Good, 1950s reference. Uh, BSME, Universal University, 2004, Wright State University, they, they, all those are in there, okay? And notice, your thesis name shows, in, shows up all over again. It shows up in two places. You cannot screw up and type it different in one place than another because I don't allow it. That's why you would want to have it defined as a variable because now any place in your document where you want that, you just say, thesis title. If you type thesis title any place in your document, all those words go in there. Any place you want to redo something again, you can have a variable that defines it. Advisor's name, etc. As we scroll down over here, we have instructions. Okay, year to complete, use uh, this you don't need to worry about. You can tell. I don't know what that means. Well, ignore it. Okay, that's, that's certainly the case. Okay, Advisor's name, thesis director, title, etc. You just modify it in there. It will get the spacing right for you. And if it doesn't, you send it to me, and this is what I do in my spare time. I will make it work in the general case. Okay? You don't have to worry about formatting. This, sits, this fits the style. Just for the fun of it, I made sure I'd got that one right for you. You probably don't know who that is. You should know who your advisor is, but perhaps not who the dean of the graduate school is. And the full title, people will screw that up. He has double titles right now. Uh, let's see, uh, committee member one, committee number two, committee member three, committee member four. And so you, you replace that with the names, okay? You replace that with the names and in they go. Let's see. Ah, da -da -da. Uh, let's see. Well, let's keep on going on. All right, abstract. This is what's setting all of these styles. It defined a bunch of variables. Now it goes to a style. Okay. Author, title, these are things. When you use LaTeX, it automatically generates a PDF. It's not an option. It generates a PDF. The PDF is what you need to post to the university. Okay. It's a universal document that can be read on, on any computer uh, after a fashion. And there are ways to search your document. And you define a bunch of things when you create a PDF. You probably won't figure out how to do this inside Word. You could. In here, it's automatically done for you. So that if somebody goes to search for PDFs in your dissertation, it's all taken care of. All those search lines, they're all taken care of. Okay, more things. Page style, Roman numerals, plain. You can read this and you can get some idea. Uh, right header, uh, today it's going to put uh, uh, it would put the date in here, but I have that turned off right now. But it would actually put the date in there. You can use the word today. So I left that in there even though we're not using it. It is something that you can turn on and off in order to have multiple printed out copies on your desk and know, hey, when did I print this copy out? Because you, you can lose track of that. So having the date, even if you use Word, having today's date in there when you print it is going to be helpful because you'll have 10 pages on this date, 10 pages from that date, and you lose track. Let's see. Well, that was kind of cool. What happened? So what I did is on the Mac, the keys are a little bit different. On the PC, a little bit different. I clicked in here, and it follows my cursor. You can imagine this is hard, a little bit harder to edit. And in fact, I've actually shown you the hard part already. The hardest parts of LaTeX are already there, which is just fill in the blanks. Okay? That was the hardest part the, for you. For me, it was figuring out the commands all around that, okay? I had to do that at one point or another. How did I do that? I stole a thesis template from a different university, okay? 
And that's almost traditional how this done. But that's how you did it with Word documents, right? You found something with a style and you use that. I don't know exactly where this came from. It wasn't even me that did this. It was Sean Martar that wrote it the first time and I just took it a little bit further along. But if I just keep, and for me on the Mac, it's the command key. Uh, on PC, it might be control. On Linux, it'd be something different. And the reason I chose Tech Studio, you can run it on any of those operating systems. And your document will work perfectly equivalently on all of those operating systems. Got a Mac here, got a PC here, whatever. No big deal. And so, how to make lists of symbols shown right here. And of course, if you notice, look on the left. Well, it's kind of the middle of your screen. Wherever I look over here, it's following. So it can be very hard to edit this stuff because if I'm over here and I want to edit this, we don't even work. I have to scroll through this to, to find it. That looks like it'd be hard to do, but it's a lot easier if I do that. So it does do that, making it a lot easier to do. Of course, if you're thinking, well, gee, yeah, with Word that's already built in. Yeah, of course it is. That's why we had to solve the problem. Okay, uh, Jerome Lorenz, when I say we, it was Jerome, French guy. So, how to put together tables, so on and so forth. Table of contents. Now, this is a little bit of the pain in the butt. If you're really good at Word, you'll actually know how to do this. In LaTeX, there's, nobody is bad at LaTeX. You just don't know the command that you're trying to do at the moment because you're not really capable of being bad at it. So to do this table of contents in LaTeX is you type slash table of contents and it shows up automatically. Cool thing is this PDF, this is all hyperref. So I'm not gonna, well, why not? We can do that. So I wonder if there's a back, yeah. Yeah. All right, so that table of contents so, programs, windows. So you automatically have a hyperref linked document without having to do anything. There was no, it's nothing special you're gonna have to add in there. Your entire document, the whole way through. List of figures. There's the table of contents, list of figures. How did I generate that? Well, I typed slash, every command in, in uh, LaTeX, LaTeX, I, yet again, you make fun, I don't have know how to say it is starting with a slash, and that means it's a command. So slash list of figures, that's where your list of figures come. Where does it get this information from? I'll show you that, okay, I'll show you that as we go through. So there's your list of figures, it generates it. You don't have to worry about that. Hey, I added a new figure, I need to go edit my list of figures. No you don't, it's automatically taken care of, okay? List of tables, uh, it, this is just a demo document, there's just one, that's enough tables. So easy enough, okay? Acknowledgements, so on and so forth, we can follow through there. Okay, notice page formatting here, this is the right stage style. You don't use Roman, Roman numerals until you get to the body of the text. You don't worry about that, that's all taken care of. Okay, you just kind of ignore that. Okay, let's see. The uh, you know details. Th this is the way that um, they like it done. So we got to do it the way they say to do it. Dedication page. It's already in there. Okay. By the way, what you want to do on this dedication is you put that in the very final copy, uh, and, and you can kind of leave that blank that way if you don't want to list your advisor in there because he was a real prick, you know. You don't, you don't have to worry about upsetting him when you defend. There should okay? be a euphemism for that. Too, this is college, not high school. <laughs> it's college, not high school. Okay? I am very sensitive. <laughs> I know you're sensitive. I'm not very sensitive. So, all right, if he's a meanie. <laughs> if he's a meanie. Yeah, I should be a little bit more. All right, so. Anyway. Now. Interesting thing here, I just showed you how you could make this thing really hard. This means left quote, left quote, so everything in, in LaTeX could be done as a command. Now, of course, instead of that, I could actually use, you know, one of them. 
that would have been a lot easier. But I'm showing you there's multiple ways to do this stuff. Okay? The one thing LaTeX doesn't have that will drive some people crazy is that when you want to do quotes, you have to do two, two single left quotes and then two single right quotes. And then when you do that, what's going to happen is it will actually go in and put those in there. That is a weirdity of it. It doesn't actually, now some editors will actually do that for you. And I'm about to find out if it does it here. Yeah, and this one doesn't. You may have an option to turn that on, but it didn't do that. It did this, okay? So be aware of that. This right here. Now, this is a ridiculously long section, okay? This is about, this section is about citations. This is important. I think you're covering this in the class, why you need to cite. I'm not going to go over that. But this is ridiculous as a section header. Head, head editor. So, nevertheless, you may end up with a long section header and you don't necessarily want that in your table of contents. So let's go look at our table of contents and you can see it's much shorter, right? So what I can do is I can define a section. This is the way LaTeX works. You mark it up by the functionality. This is a section. This is the name of the section. Now you have to get a little bit of syntax, but once you do this a couple of times, this becomes obvious. You can copy and paste out of the example I have here. Curly brackets are, this is the actual name of the section. If you want an option, put it in square brackets before there. So the long definition is the one in curly brackets here, the short one in square brackets. Okay. Some of these are entertaining absurdums. Let's see, I never recompiled it. Every time you make a change to the document, you do have to recompile it and uh, turn it into a VCR, you know, you hit play. Remember, anybody remember VCRs? Okay, that's great stuff. Great stuff, <laughs> Betamax. All right, it's good stuff, man. All right, so over here. How to do lists. To do a list, you can itemize or you can enumerate. If I itemize, there's just bullets. Okay, there's just bullets. If I enumerate, notice how it actually is kind of linking itself together there and finding the, uh, the partners. It numbers them, okay? Some of you, uh, I can't imagine you all haven't wrestled with, no, I didn't want to make a numbered list here. Please stop indenting. No, don't do this. I watched the dean do that Monday, and I just kind of chuckled because we've all been there. Uh, I don't want to fight with it over my thesis here. So I can change that to enumerate, and that's there. If I want to have something uh, as a command, I can show it in this form. What I did is I actually said use verb, Use single quotes, and then it'll turn into this form. So I can use a command in there. And I can typeset it differently from the rest of the document. Same consistent style there. There are other ways to do that, and I'll probably change that in the future. But that uh, gives you some idea of how to change things. The style of your big bibliography depends on what packages were used. And I give instructions on how to do this. You can change that in the header, and you can change that. Yet again, you just read those directions, it's explanatory. There are notes inside this file, if you notice, there were comments earlier on to explain exactly what's going on. Nevertheless, looking over here, see where I said C section 1.1.2? Anybody who's ever written a long document knows that that's actually a very hard thing to do. See this equation, see this section, because then you change it and it's not there. It is possible to do in Word. Very few are successful with it. I'm always impressed when somebody makes it work in Word. Okay. Uh, instead, in LaTeX, that's just kind of very natural. C section this, reference section equations. Okay. The tilde just simply means I don't want this to be an extra wide space. I want to make sure there's exactly one space between the words there. It's just uh, probably not going to cause a problem, but you can always find it. This thing is laden with little tricks in case you see a problem in your document that you, in many cases you won't really need. But the command is reference this section. And if, with each section, I give it a name, okay? I give it an actual name. I didn't actually name this one because I didn't reference it, and I'll show that later on. 
but you can see it shows up there. If I move an entire section, the number will take care of itself. You just don't worry about it. And in fact, I walked back to my office after a lecture one day, and I realized that my manuscript that I was teaching the course out of didn't make any sense because chapter four should have actually been chapter three. So I took chapter four and I moved it in front of chapter three, recompiled it and sent it out to the students. Every single equation number, every section label, everything all done. And I said, here, this should read a little bit better. Okay? Try doing that in Word. So we go over here, this section equations, I use the hyperlink to get here, and I can use my command key to go back and see the cursor showed up here. How do you label the section with a name? You use the label command. Now, of course, I ask the question in a way that gives away the answer. That makes it a lot easier. But the words are not that weird. Okay, the words are not that weird to use. Ta -da -ta -da. We already did some enumeration here. If you specifically want to add in a hyperref inside your document, well, I already did it. Look at that. I didn't mean to click on it. So, CTAN, the Comprehensive Tech Archive Network. This is where all the little packages to do cool things exist. You can actually use the hyperref command. So, this document has that demo in there, how to make that link show up. Now, I know, on Word, you right click, you say add hyperlink. And then sometimes you hyperlink the space or you hyperlink the period. And so the period is blue, but you want the period black. And so you have to sub connect and, and do that. And once in a while, it's not a big deal. Throughout an entire document, it gets extremely old. So it's very explicit. What gets hyperlinked is this word here, CTAN. That's it. Nothing else hyperlinked. Okay? No hidden formatting you're not aware of. Okay? We're actually having spell checking here so we can go through. And apparently, Internet should be spelled with capital. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but it doesn't matter if I win or lose today. We're just going to ignore that. How to do a footnote slash footnote curly brackets. There we go. So it shows up in your foot automatically formatted. You don't have to fight it. It's going to stay on the same page. Okay. Wow, man, my eyes are getting old. I can make this bigger, but I need a larger sh screen. Maybe I can do this. All right. Moving through. The bibliography. I did mention this a little bit before. But we go to the bibliography. What we're going to do here is use a bibliography style command. I should have formatted that. It's in the text file. And you don't have to worry about that too much. It's already in there. You edit the pieces you need as you change. You can start with this and tweak it as you go. Uh, we mentioned that you can actually go through and uh, use a couple of styles. The CTAN, Comprehensive Tech Archive Network, was listed. So you can go and find one for what you want. If it's for philosophy, actually a lot of uh, philosophy majors use LaTeX. So it's created by a mathematician, turned into philosophy. Engineers use it. Okay? Poetry, formatting poetry, I have no idea. It's, I'm just really impressed. Not necessarily known as the best programmers. You know, we're hackers compared to computer science, but you know, they don't teach programming. So that anybody in, uh, in English can, can work through this, I'm, I'm impressed because I, have, I go to war with English language and lose regularly. So, uh, let's see. Let's go some equations here. And you'll see a little bit of why this is. So there's a couple of little tricks here, and I'll let you read that uh, as, as you want. Let's go through equations, because one thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put a lot of equations in your document, okay? So in your document, here's an equation section. Okay, it's a subsection, that's why it's called subsection, and then a sub-subsection, you can start to figure this out. You don't have to worry about formatting. And if you want to raise the level of it, just delete one sub. Okay. Labeled, so I can reference it later, which we already were here. And then over here, I'm beginning an equation. This equation, one of the cool features of this, I keep pointing at my screen as if you can see my left hand, but the, 
uh, the highlighting right here, you can actually see that equation when I hover over that in, in uh, many of these cases. It actually goes through and puts that up so you can see it, although you could follow it in the document by command clicking. Now, I want to label the equation, and it's labeled alpha over beta, and all of the variables I used for my equations in this case, I called eq colon. Why? That way, if I have an alpha over beta figure, there's no conflict. It just makes it a little bit easier to find. And then here is how you write it. Okay. You don't have to hunt through the math editor to find this. And for a uh, regular equation writer, if you're writing a lot of equations, this does get fast. It starts out slow. Okay. It does indeed start out slow. I guarantee it. I promise. It, it takes you about a day to start feeling like, okay, I have a chance at this. Okay. By the second day, you're saying, okay, I can really see the advantages of this. And by the third day, you'll do something like I did in my class one day when I was walking into an exam and I said, you know, they should have a table of, uh, of Laplace transforms. So I typed one up with about 10 entries and it took me about five minutes. And you're not doing that in Word when you're hunting and clicking with a mouse. You're just not going to do that. However, the reason we're using this is because it's giving me these types of things. That's a left, uh, that adds a subscript. So let's go inside the equation. Say I want that beta to have a subscript. I can go on and I can do a subscript. I'm going to just take a guess. It gave an autocomplete to it. And I added down a subscript gamma for no good reason whatsoever. So those things indeed are there. So you can go through how to make an array, how to make an equation. And it's going to look messy. I have lots of examples in there for you, though. Uh, how to make a square root, uh, how to do um, uh, integrals, etc. You hunt it out, you'll find that. And once you do it a couple times, you are good. Now, there's going to be times when you don't actually want an equation number because, I mean, everybody should know this. I hope the answer is yes, right? Okay. Everybody remembers that? Quadratic equation. And so you can leave that off, and you do that simply by putting an asterisk on it. Okay? How would I know to do that? Well, because I read the thesis template that Dr. Slater provided on GitHub.com that showed me how to do that. That's not how I discovered it, of course. But I read a bunch of books. You know, I read a bunch of things and learned how to do that. So it's there. Uh, do not get the idea that you can't Google and find these things out. And in fact, one of the cool things you'll find out if you join some of the, uh, the groups, and I'm part of the Mac LaTeX users group and so on and so forth, is you can ask questions and they will answer and give you help. If you need help with Microsoft Word, you can hopefully Google it and find an answer. And if you can't get an answer by Googling, you're usually shot. You're done. Okay? You've probably been there at some point, and you just had to bang on it for a long time. When it comes to LaTeX, by the way, I forgot to say, free. This is free. It's open source. So the nice thing about that is it's a we're all in it together attitude. So when you have a we're all in it together attitude, what it means is that if you need help, they come and help you. And what you'll start doing is helping them. And so I'm on these lists, and I, I go in, and people have questions, and I help them, and then they help me, so on and so forth. So if you've never really gotten involved in uh, open source and free software, you're really missing out on a, a great community where you have common problems. You can share them and share those solutions. So when I have problems in LaTeX, I go onto my group, and within a few minutes, I'll typically have more than enough answers. And there'll be answers from, there's a, I've got friends in Germany, I've got friends in France, I've got, uh, there's a, uh, actually, one of the guys that uh, edited and created much of this code here was a high school kid in Brazil. Um, made me kind of humble because uh, all I could do uh, when I was in high school was pretty much play video games. But the community is fantastic at being able to go out there and, and help you. Go and sign those up. And I have some links to that type of thing as well. The... Occasion comes when you want aligned equations. Okay? In Word, this is a little bit ugly and awful. Well, here I've got two equations. They're nicely aligned. I didn't have to worry about them. They're automatically numbered. I can reference them individually. 
okay? No big deal. And you can see by reading this, minus B, PM for plus or minus, I have a pet peeve, I want POM, but you know, that's one that I can never remember. Square root, B, carrot to the square, okay? A, C, 2A. This is a fraction, the numerator, and then the denominator. So it's a very simple language. If you, haven't, if you only learn one thing out of LaTeX, even if you don't use the thesis, is that when you go to do plotting in MATLAB, and you want to put a Greek character in there, you're using LaTeX. You can use LaTeX inside those labels, figure labels and titles, to get them out there. It gives you an idea. Even the commercial, they can't figure out how to do it any better. So that is a common thread you're going to find. that These equations, this style, it is the way that it gets done. Uh, referencing a section here again. More can be found in the references listed in section 2.3. How to align commands, etc. Here is an array. How to do an array. There's something a little bit messier. All right. So, to do an array. Uh, I don't know why I did this. This is kind of weird, but We'll do it this way. There's a couple different ways to do this. I would have used the B matrix these days. This was written a long time ago. But here is the start of the equation, C sub DA, underscore for subscript, caret for superscript. Okay, the little hat, pointy hat. Okay, in curly brackets, everything that goes down below. Square brackets is square brackets. You can see start with down below, go up above, and then the whole thing Everything in those brackets will go to the minus one, okay? Curly brackets you can't use by themselves. Uh, you have to use a slash, otherwise it won't know what to do. And here, make a left brace, make a right brace. You see how it highlight, excuse me, highlighted for you? So that's where it's gonna close out. Everything inside there is going to the minus one. Why are there uh, double brackets? Just to show you if you have double brackets, it ignores one of the sets of brackets, okay? So I'm making mistakes intentionally. Okay. And here, the, uh, I'm centering each one of the three columns is centered. I could have gone center, right, left, CRL, uh, LRC, whatever I want. Okay. And then over here, A, ampersand B, ampersand C, column, separation, column. Se so everything before the ampersand is in the first column. This goes to the next one. And I showed you, this is really messy. I really hate to write like this. It's hard to read, but it doesn't matter because it's going to format it by what the text actually says. So here's the first one. So I've got diagonal dots, D dots. Nothing in this one. And there's nothing over here. Nothing over here. I've got this over here. This is kind of an equation uh, in my field of study. And then this over here, so on and so forth. Nothing, nothing, and diagonal dots. We could in there add... C dots if we wanted to. Why? They would make no sense, but we could. So, yet again, you'd have to go look those up and you hunt through and you can find those. As I said, we don't have to number the equations in LaTeX. It's done automatically. As long as I don't tell it not to, I begin an equation, I end an equation, everything in between gets a number. It's sequential. If I insert an equation later on, the numbering takes care of itself. My dissertation and my master's thesis both have that error in them. Got submitted and I found the errors later. It's too late. Can't change it. Okay. Now, sometimes you want an equation to be inside a paragraph. Sometimes you want it embedded in a paragraph. It's a subtle difference. This equation is between paragraphs. I leave a blank line after there. And I didn't mention this in LaTeX as we're writing. A blank line means new paragraph. Indenting, double spaces, they mean nothing because they mean nothing structurally. Okay? If you need extra space, you need to tell LaTeX specifically, put some extra space in here. And it's unlikely you actually do. What you actually mean is I want to use two columns or I want to do an indent. And when you do the indent, do the same one all the time. So there's a slash indent command. Okay? But there is no double space that to line it up. And you'll see things don't look well when don't look good when somebody uh, does that. 
it just never never works out well. So LaTeX does force you to think structurally about what you're doing and get away from it. So new paragraph, this. If I don't do that, you can see what happens, and the indent is gone. Why? Because now it's the same paragraph. The spacing takes care of itself, and it looks like a textbook. If you look at textbooks that look, uh, if you have an aesthetic eye, you'll actually see some of these details in those textbooks. And here's an equation that's embedded uh, inside. Yeah, I already had that example down there. Okay, and it's double spaced. Your thesis is going to look a little bit weird. Okay, because it's double spaced, and so just lots of extra space. That's where your professors put a lot of red marks all over the place, and you know, just make you feel really bad. But when that happens, don't get too depressed. You should see how we review each other's papers. It's much harsher. Okay. It's much harsher. One of the things you're going to notice here, because inside here I don't have this formatted as double spaced, when I go to write my conference paper or my journal paper, I can take this, copy it, paste it, and if the style for the journal paper is nine point font, single spaced, it's all done. I didn't have to change anything. All the formatting takes care of itself because that was defined outside of this, right? What does a paragraph look like that's not embedded in the paragraph? Dr. Kender, or, uh, Colonel Kender, how long do I have? Um, I'm going to leave at 12.10. I'll, I'll leave it, well, I'll, I'll leave at 12.10 because they'll be gone. The class is officially over at... Uh, he doesn't let you out on time, does he? That's the way we are. I know what the start date is, though. <laughs> <laughs> on the web page. When, when, when does class let out? 1210. Uh, 1210? Okay, very good. All right, so the uh, figures, okay? How do you create a figure? Begin figure. I'm going to try to put this at the top of the page. LaTeX will not. Ah, look at that. I dragged and dropped. I didn't want to do that. Okay? And this. Exclamation means really, really, please. Now, it won't do something that really looks bad, but it'll try. I'm going to center it. I'm going to include a graphic. The graphic is example. That is actually a graphic file, and it actually, you can see the file. There's a PDF that came out of uh, probably MATLAB okay, that it's referencing. Okay. Nice thing about that is I can update that figure, and I never, ever have to go back and copy and paste it into the document. Your advisor says, uh, all those labels on all the figures, when you have meters, I want you to write them as M, not meter, for those 40 graphics. Hopefully, you set up a script file in MATLAB or whatever, and you can just edit all the Y labels or whatnot. You can hit run. It all has save commands or print to a EPS file, or print to a PDF file, into a location where your LaTeX document is looking. So you go through, you do a string replace meter to M, you hit run, compile your document, and you're done in a couple of seconds. Okay? Which, by the way, I actually did in front of a review panel at DARPA one time when they criticized me and uh, said that we wanted the labels changed. They turned their heads. I made the change. I hit compile, and they look up on the screen, and everything had changed. And they thought that they were crazy, and I said, no, I, I changed it, the whole document, that quick. Okay? Use, use the computers to your advantage. Okay? The job of the computer is to work for you. All right? So anyways, figures, figure labels. This would be centered, but it's pretty darn big. Okay, a little ridiculous, but I don't necessarily always put forth good examples in here. I'm trying to show you what happens when these things happen. Uh, so, the label, uh, whoops, I think I went too far. The label, right down here, okay, and over here is the caption. And notice, this has the, so there was our graphic. PIX is just a subdirectory, okay? Relative directory. Your caption, this is the short version of it that goes in your list of figures earlier on. Remember that list of figures at the beginning of this? 
Here is your long caption, okay, a little bit extreme, just to make that point. And here's your label so I can reference it later. So I can go slash ref fig such and such. Later on, that number travels around as you move the, num the figures. Move the section over here. Move it from here to here. No big deal, as opposed to, man, I'm not going to sleep tonight and risk a lot of mistakes. Subfigures. Sometimes you want figure 1.3a and 1.3b. How to do that? Here's an example of exactly how to do that. This is how you adjust the width of the figure. Now, I could do this, but I didn't necessarily use the best form. What I should have done is I could have actually defined that as a, um, I could have defined subfigure width as a variable up at the beginning of the document. And so when your advisor says, all your figures are a little bit too wide, make them a little thinner. If you actually created this by using a subfigure width variable, you could change it to the top and recompile it. And when they turned around, I said, I'm done. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you as an engineer, the smarter thing to do is say, all right, it's going to take me after doing, doing this. You go back, you change it, and then you go to a movie. Okay? They think you're doing it all day. I don't know if that's ethical, but you know. <laughs> Send out your resume. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, huh? I said it's only an ethics class. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's a difference between humor, so I'm not actually advocating that. But I am advocating that in order to really be uh, effective and um, a commodity in the market, being able to do things quickly is, is important. Okay? Learning those types of skills where you can really move and being able to automate things in a computer really makes you powerful and efficient compared to other people. Okay? That is a big deal. The nice thing is I've taken my LaTeX code, sorry, I've taken my MATLAB code and dumped it out to LaTeX that automatically embeds into my document on a regular basis. So I don't change my document. As it shows up, it shows up, and we're good to go, including MATLAB can print out text. So it can actually dump out the actual LaTeX document itself. <coughs> all right. Make sure all your spacing is equal, and don't make your figures too small, as my advisor told me. Old people read these. OK, <laughs> as I squint over this. so. Make sure that you use enough spacing, et cetera, and ex explain how to do that in here. But we can make even more subfigures. Now, I made this specifically because these are illegibly small. But, you know, it makes the point. Okay? I can actually change this. I can change these widths here. And you might want to make this 0.45, 45, 45. And when you change the width in LaTeX, it automatically makes it proportional. I'm sure you've seen somebody take a MATLAB figure before and then make it narrower, and then you have really tall characters. What font did you use? Uh, it wasn't a font. You just did it. So, boom. Automatically proportionate scaling. Not even thinking, not worrying about it. Okay. Including chapters. You can actually take a text, one of these text files, and put it in a separate file. Why would you want to do that? Well, when the document gets kind of large, you might want to do that. So this is all you have to do. You put the include in there, you, you take it out. I don't even know if a chapter two exists here. Let's find out. I don't think it exists. We'll have to create a chapter two. Now look at that. You click on it and it says, hey, you want to create it? No, nah, I don't want to. We'll leave that comment in there. It's for another day. Let's see. Making tables. The bane of LaTeX. The one thing I will tell you is LaTeX is terrible at making tables. I will not make an excuse for that. It is just ugly at doing that. So if you go online, you'll actually find a website where you can actually edit the information and put it right in there. And then it'll create the code for the table. Okay? Alternatively, if you have matrices or vectors or polynomials in uh, MATLAB, I've written code for that where you can actually ship them into array to LaTeX and it'll, or matrix to LaTeX. You can find that code out there. It's on my web pages. It'll convert it to the LaTeX code. Okay. Will it output LaTeX? No, it should. The table should output to LaTeX. It outputs to uh, Excel pretty well. Does it now? Okay. So one. Well, So, 
Yeah, exactly. So the, I don't know if it outputs. So nevertheless, I've coded around MATLAB multiple times before, and so it did not exist, and it does now. Add path and those things. I, a lot of, uh, if you have MATLAB on your computer, then my name's on your computer. It's inside there because a lot of their code came from me. So typesetting programs. We have four minutes left. Okay. So with four minutes, how much conclusion we're going to get? We're going to want some questions here. There's a quick summary here. Windows, Mac OS uh, references. Okay. Uh, so here's a couple of places you can go and you can look and you can get extra help on this. And by the way, bibliography. Quick uh, summary of this is, I hate typesetting references and I haven't done it in about oh, 20 years. And the reason I haven't done it in 20 years is because I actually go over here and I say, hey, my bibliography style, I'm just going to use the plain one here, and uh, here's the bibliography file. What's that? That's actually a database. I know, it's magic. And if I go over to Now you can find a different editor for your um, for your PC or for Linux. There's different ones out there, and I didn't go to a different one. It's actually a database editor, and the database is essentially what's the author, what's the title, what's the journal, what's the year, and then I have a style that says this is how I want it formatted. And in fact, you can go to the library. Usually, I have a little bit more time. I'm a little bit slow uh, this year. You can go to the library. You can dump that data out in a format. EndNote is one of them, uh, BibTeX is another one, and you can just import that and so you don't have to retype them and correct anything. You know, it, it comes correct. You don't have to worry about is it italics, is it bold, so on and so forth. There's no point because it's just information, right? If that's the title, that should be easy enough. <laughs>